This screencast is the first one on the factors market and it's talking about derived demand. In this screencast we're going to go over the definition for derived demand and we're also going to look at the factors that shift the resource demand curve. So when we're talking about the definition of derived demand, we're talking about the demand for a resource is derived from the demand from the output being produced or from the product that's being produced. So what's really important to recognize here is it's about the demand for the product. The, if the demand for a product is increasing, then the demand for the resource is going to also increase. If the demand for the product is decreasing, then you're not going to need as many workers in order to make it. And so that's going to affect the demand for it. So when we're looking at the definition of derived demand, not only do you need to recognize that it's derived from the demand from the product that's being produced, but that there's two things that affect derived demand, productivity and product price. And when you are on, uh, doing an FRQ, you should use both sentences when you are defining derived demand. The second sentence falls into the formula that we will learn in the next screencast, but it's really important in being able to explain it on an FRQ. So the demand for labor curve it looks just like a demand curve that we've seen before in that it's downward sloping. And when we're looking at this formula here, which we'll get into in the next one um, screencast, what I think is important to recognize here is the labeling that's done. The demand for labor is also referenced as the marginal revenue product for labor or the value of the marginal product for labor. Your book uses the VMP, and so instead of sometimes labeling it demand for labor, it will label it the VMP for labor, the value of the marginal product. What you need to be able to do is recognize any of these labelings on a multiple choice question, so that way you know that you're talking about the demand for labor curve. So when we talk about the demand for labor curve, we're talking about different factors that will shift this downward sloping demand curve. The number one reference that is given is the price of the good it produces. Because remember, you have this derived demand. It's derived from, and the demand for a resource is derived from the demand for the product that it produces. And so one of the things to think about then is the price of the good that it makes. And it really makes sense. It should make sense intuitively how this falls into play. If the demand for a good that is being produced decreases, because this is the product market here, if the demand for the good decreases, then the price of the product is going to go down. And what we'll learn about in the next screencast is how price is used in order to look at the demand curve. But not only that, you're also looking at here how if I'm not going to make as many shoes, then I don't need as many shoe makers. And so the demand for the um, resource will go down. So when there's a decrease in the demand for the product, there's a decrease in the price of the product. When the price of the product goes down, the value of the marginal product or the demand for labor will also go down. And then the converse is true. When there's an increase in demand for a product, then you're going to make more of the good, and so you're going to need more workers. And when you have an increase in demand for the product, you'll find that the product price will go up, and this is going to also cause the value of the marginal product to increase. One of the um, other things besides the price of the good it produces that will affect the demand curve for labor is technology. Uh, technology uh, usually will increase the demand for labor because technology will make that worker more efficient and if they're faster and they have something that will um, help the firm be able to produce things faster, then you're going to find an increase in demand. The only time that technology wouldn't, though, increase the demand for labor would be if technology was a substitute for laborers. And as a result, then, that would decrease the demand for workers. So that one really depends upon what is going on with um, the technology on that resource. The other thing that can shift the demand for a resource is the price of other factors. If the price of other factors, think of it like an input price. If the price of other factors goes up, then it makes this laborer or this resource more, um, more affordable. And as a result, then the demand for that resource will go up. 
and um, you could see there the increase in demand. The converse is true. If I can substitute one for the other and the other one is going down, then the demand for this one will go down. So these are the different things that shift the resource demand curve. And again, making sure that you remember the definition for derived demand. The demand for a resource is derived from the demand for the output being produced.